The ice cream maker has arrived! The ice cream van showed up in that neighborhood just in time. It was a hot summer day. Some children quickly ran to their parents to ask for money. Others emptied their piggy banks. They had to make it on time, because the ice cream could get finished in any moment. A car drove from around the corner. The gangster started shooting from a machine gun, and the poor ice cream maker fell out of the van directly onto the asphalt. The killer threw a Molotov cocktail right into the van, and it caught fire. Marcelo, come on, quick! The ice cream van exploded, and the gangsters fled in an unknown direction. Everyone was shocked by what had just happened. A little boy approached the ice cream maker. He looked quite depressed. Gregory, what happened to you? Mom, there is no one to bring ice cream now. Many years have passed in this terrible accident. Everyone had already forgotten about it. Life simply went on. Roger was playing his PC as usually, and already familiar music from the ice cream van resounded in the distance. The boy quietly sneaked into his parents' room and took some money from his mother's purse. A whole line gathered in front of the van. Roger's friend stood at the head of a queue. There was plenty of choice of that ice cream. He even felt confused for a second. What a cute boy. What is your dad's name? None of your business, dummy. The guys took their ice cream and ran into the park on a swing. The playground was their favorite hangout place. There were many attractions and activities. Little Ronnie also wanted to swing on the swing. He tried to climb there, and his ice cream fell. The crowd began to laugh at their clumsy peer. Look at this twisty donut! Ooh, weakling, get out of here! The park keeper stood up for Ronnie. He tried to explain the guys that it wasn't any good, offending the ones who were weaker. Roger lashed out at Ronnie just to spy the watchman. The poor guy ran away from him. The bully accidentally stumbled and stretched out on the asphalt. Ronnie ran into the valley, hid behind the trash cans, hoping to wait out the danger, while Roger wanted to find his victim and punish him for this spoiled mood. An ice cream van slowly drove into the alley. Roger was confused. What the hell he was doing there? You must be very tired. Yeah. I have an ice cream that makes tiredness melt away. Roger gladly accepted the treat, and it turned out to be very tasty. That sly ice cream man took out the knife, hit Roger and dragged him into this van. Little Ronnie saw everything. He approached the ice cream maker and thanked him for help. I was always sick back in the childhood, that's why I'm so weak. I understand that. Gregory remembered how much time he spent in the hospital. Out of everything in his life, Gregory was afraid of injections. The doctor was always giving him an ice cream, and while he was distracted that man made the injections. Hey, what are you doing there? I'm giving little Ronnie an ice cream. And what are these red spots? It's just a strawberry syrup. Tuno was happily telling his parents that a new ice cream maker appeared in their town. And his ice cream was incredibly tasty. Tuna's father freaked out hearing about the ice cream maker. This filthy ice cream maker has filled the whole Roblox. Tuna looked at his father in utter confusion. He didn't expect such a reaction. Marcellus said that he would soon finish building his own ice cream factory. He would put the new ice cream kiosks all over the city. And all the stupid, filthy ice cream makers would no longer be needed. Someone knocked on the door. It turned out to be Roger's mom. She was very nervous. It was already dark outside and her son still hadn't returned home. Tuna said that they were all together in the park, and the watchman messed up with them, and Roger ran away somewhere. Go, call the police now! The police searched through the entire park. Drops of blood were all over the path that led to the guard's house. The door of that house were also stained with blood, and the detectives found Roger's clothes that was all in knife cuts in the trash can. The boy's mother confirmed that it was her son's t-shirt. I was framed! The police were interrogating the watchman for quite a long time, but he refused to take the plea. The searches in the park continued until the very morning. Their compassionate neighbors came to help, but still, Roger was nowhere to be found. The watchman was taken to the police station in the morning. Look, an ice cream man! The policeman stopped by the van, 
and asked Gregory for the most delicious ice cream he had. Gentlemen, I have an ice cream intended specifically for the cops. Gregory opened the refrigerator with a smile on his face and scooped some ice cream into the waffle bowl. The cops were eating the ice cream with delight and telling the man that tonight they caught a killer. The ice cream man listened to them with great interest and advised to execute the scoundrel on an electric chair. The policemen were satisfied and agreed with him. Call us in case you'll see anything suspicious. The police laughed and right after that moment Ronnie ran to the ice cream maker and asked him to share the secret of such delicious ice cream. Let's go. Gregory brought the boy to his house. Little Ronnie was examining the man's house with an open mouth. It was the most interesting thing he'd ever seen. There was an amazing laboratory. The boy was simply speechless from excitement. There were so many different tubes, wires and incomprehensible devices. Gregory proudly noticed that ice cream would turn out to be tastier if one added a teenager into it. And who is that? Memories flooded Gregory's head. The doctor always managed to outwit him when the boy was eating his ice cream. He was dozing off with a sound sleep for a long time and he always had that one dream. Marcelo, come quick! The ice cream van exploded and the gangsters fled in an unknown direction. But in his dream, there was no one soul around him. All the people had disappeared. So Gregory stood alone in the middle of the street. Suddenly, the ice cream man jumped off the asphalt and demanded Gregory to find his murderer and make an ice cream out of him in order to get back to life. I know this guy, Marcelo. This is Tuno's father. They went to Tuno's house and set up surveillance from the bushes. An armored jeep drove up to the house. The guard checked the nearest area and called the boss on the radio. This exact Marcelo came out and they departed. Gregory felt quite devastated. There was no way to get to Marcelo, so it was nearly impossible to revive Bunch Bricklow. I think Tuna suits the purpose too. I don't get it. He's Marcelo's son. Their DNA is identical. <laughs> Tuna heard the music coming from the ice cream van. He was so happy, he almost fell off from the couch. The boy grabbed his money and rushed out into the street. The van was parked right next to his house. Tuna asked for the watermelon ice cream. Oh, can you help me open this box with the ice cream? Tuna was so naive. He climbed inside the van and got in over the hat. Gregory noticed that Heather was watching him from the nearby house. If you tell someone, I will kill your parents. Heather burst into tears and hid under the bed. Already in the laboratory, they threw Tuna into a vat of boiling milk. Gregory turned on the mixer and lowered it into the vat. The milk turned red. Then he took several cubes of sugar, added them and mixed everything thoroughly once again. He turned on the pump and the ice cream started flowing right into the brick loss flask. But nothing happened. The ice cream maker did not come to life. Several days since Tuna's disappearance had passed, there were no news from the police still. Who's looking for my son? Why don't you do anything at all? Rupert explained to Tuna's father that all the necessary measures had been taken. The policemen were patrolling the city. The matter was complicated by the fact that there wasn't a single witness who had seen the abduction. Marcelo was unpleased. David, there is work for you. The former Rablanostra fighters lived in a sport club on the outskirts of the city. Marcelo assigned his old acquaintances the task to find his son and punish the culprit. Gunsters rushed into the car and went searching for the boy. Has something happened with you? It's alright, ma. In fact, Heather was very, very scared. Lately, the ice cream maker had been chasing her wherever she went. He hid behind the shelves in the supermarket and she barely managed to sneak away unnoticed. From the window in her room, she saw the ice cream maker van passing slowly by her house or standing at the school's gate. 
Thus she had to climb over the fence so that he didn't see her. Heather's life turned into a true hell. But she remembered Ice Cream Maker's threats, so she was afraid to complain to her parents. They heard their daughter fertility crying in the room and thought that she was just worried about her missing friends. Kitty, 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 kitty. What a pretty kitten. Who left you here? Gregory decided to use the kitten as his bait. Heather was walking from school when she heard a plaintive meowing. She couldn't just walk by and decided to feed the poor kitten. Meanwhile, Gregory crept up from behind and threw back over her head. Right in that moment, the gangster were passing by. Look, something is happening in the alley. They rushed to help the girl. Admit it, you kidnapped Tuno. Gregory shouted that he was just making children happy. A police patrol was passing by. Arms to the ground, hands up. The gangsters tried to explain something to the cops, but the police thought these were threats and opened fire for effect. The bruised ice cream maker told the cops that he saw how these bastards were dragging the poor child into the alley and just wanted to stop them. But the forces were unequal and he was beaten up. The frightened Heather was just too afraid to argue, so she stood there and cried. The cops fenced off the crime scene with tape and Rupert asked Heather where she lived, because it would be better if someone could bring her home. Gregory offered his help. He lived right in that side and was ready to accompany the girl home. Rupert thanked the ice cream maker and went about his own business. Hiding around the corner, Gregory started dragging Heather into his van. Rupert saw an incoming call from Marcello on the bandit's phone and called him back. What have you done? These guys worked for me. They were just looking for the kidnapper. Rupert checked the ice cream maker through the police base. And it turned out that Gregory spent almost all his childhood in a psychiatric hospital. He had a serious childhood trauma. A long, long time ago, an ice cream maker was shot in front of his eyes. And he still had not recovered. Rupert remembered that brutal murder. He was only catted back then. And while criminologists were collecting the evidence, he just chased away the curious bystanders. Rupert remembered the boy with a strange look. How the doctors dragged him away from the murdered ice cream maker. And his mother shouted after the ambulance. Gregory! Gregory! What have I done? The cops arrived to Heather's house. Her mother told that her daughter had not returned from school yet. Rupert reassured the woman that there wasn't any reason to worry. It was just a routine check. But then he rushed to the car to call for help. Special forces went in search of the ice cream maker. And an interception plan was announced. The van drove up to little Ronnie's house. The boy abandoned all his tasks and ran into the street. It's so great that you came. He was very happy to see his best friend. The ice cream maker opened the van. Heather laid on the floor. A very delicious ice cream will turn out of her. The noise of a helicopter and sirens resounded. The policeman surrounded the ice cream maker. He hid behind Heather. Gregory, let the girl go and give up. Everything will be fine. You'll just go to the hospital. No, I don't want to. They will hurt me again. Rupert signaled to the sniper and the ice cream maker was neutralized. Ronnie was crying his heart out. The police killed his best friend. What would he do now? The cops freed Heather and helped Ronnie to get away from that van. Don't worry, boy. No one else will offend you. The guys were sent to the hospital for examination. Heather clung to Ronnie. She thought that he was a victim of the ice cream maker as well. Meanwhile, Ronnie was already making plans for the future. Heartbroken Marcelo began to hate the ice cream makers even more. He remembered how it all started. He has a bunch of Robux in his safe. Are you sure? Yes, my wife works as a cleaner in their house. She memorized the code for the safe. Marcel and his friends decided to rob one businessman. 
at night. They broke into his house, opened the safe, took all the Robux and quietly left. They put the money in the storage room of the nearest station in order to keep a low profile and went to mind their own routine business. Bunch said that he had to live for the new task. His friends didn't even suspect anything, but he never returned back and his mobile was unavailable. A week had passed and Marcella offered to check the stolen Robux. They went to the station and discovered that their money was not there. Bajbikolo ditched us. It turned out that the traitor took all the Robux and made his old dream come true. He bought an ice cream van and became an ice cream maker. He thought that his friends would never find him in another city, but as you already know, they did and punished him severely. Finally, Marcella finished building his ice cream factory kicked all the ice cream makers out from the city and put his stalls everywhere. Crime news! An unknown person entered the city morgue tonight, put the guard to sleep and kidnapped the bodies of the two ice cream makers. It was not possible to establish the identity of the perpetrator. And now briefly about the weather. It is sunny in Roblox, no precipitation, southwestern wind is coming from Minecraft. The city park was almost empty in the evening. Only one carefree boy decided to take his dog for a walk before going to bed. Toby, fetch! Someone crept up from behind, threw back over the guy's head and dragged him into the bushes. After school, Ronnie was hired at an ice cream factory. He had poor grades in his transcript, so he was offered only a position of a loader. Ronnie! Here is your pass, you can use it to get to work. The work turned out to be very hard and dirty. He had to unload trucks with sugar all day long. The salary was miserable and Ronnie could only afford tasteless porridge for lunch. Why are you sitting, parasites? Come on, get to work! The owner of the factory, Mr. Marcello, loved to humiliate the workers, nitpicking over tiny details. But despite all the troubles, Ronnie continued to work. He managed to secretly overhear the confectioner's conversation about a new ice cream recipe and spy on the taster. Ronnie drew a diagram of the factory premises and developed a plan of how to get closer to Marcello. Ronnie returned home after work, where his mother was waiting for him. A few years ago, she lost her sight from an accident and now she didn't go out at all. How was your day? It was okay, mom. The basement was the only joy for Ronnie. He talked with his ice cream friends there. He thought that only they could understand him. Who are you talking to in here? Ronnie told her that he'd been developing the formula for the most delicious ice cream syrup for quite a long time, but still something was missing. His mother told that when Ronnie was a child, she cooked a very, very delicious cake for him and Ronnie just couldn't stop eating until he finished it up. So what did you add to this cake? Just plain vanilla. Ronnie started shaking his head. Why hadn't he remembered about this delicious powder before? You all will be proud of me. He turned on the mixer and started waiting for the result. When the magic mixture was ready, Ronnie tasted it just a little. The syrup turned out to be insanely tasty. His head span and his stomach puffed. It was the perfect recipe and Ronnie was jumping from happiness. Mr. Marcello, the loader here asked for your audience. He wants to tell you something. Throw him out. It's time to work. The guard chased Ronnie away, but he wasn't discouraged. When the boss lordly entered the warehouse with a tour, Ronnie tried to tell him about his super syrup again. Marcella was enraged. He didn't want to listen to an ordinary loader. Deal with this dumbass! The poor fellow was beaten up, so he couldn't even walk on his own. A passing by cook helped Ronnie to get up. Here, come with me, I've got a first aid kit. Mason treated the bruises on Ronnie's face. He was a kind bearded man who liked to talk a lot. They became good friends. Now Ronnie often visited the kitchen 
where the ice cream was made. He gained the cook's trust, and using the first opportunity, oh. when Mason turned mm. his head away, poured his syrup into the main ice cream pot. The ice cream of his recipe appeared on the conveyor, and Ronnie personally loaded the boxes into the truck and asked the driver to drive more carefully because he carried valuable goods. The driver <laughs> only grinned and set off to deliver ice cream to the stalls. The syrup turned out to be very powerful. Children ate the ice cream and couldn't stop. They were getting fat instantly, but still continued to eat. Ronnie tracked down the most overfed kids and dragged them to his basement, where he prepared new hellish syrup from them. One day, Ronnie saw Heather near the ice cream stand. He liked the girl, and thus he decided to save her. You can't eat it! Ronnie told Heather that he stayed late at work yesterday and accidentally saw how Mr. Marcello, secretly from everyone, put some powder into an ice cream pot. He was really up to something. Here, look at this guy! In fear, Heather threw the sundae to the ground. You have to figure it out! Something very strange is going on! The police station was filled with complaints since the very morning. The children of Roblox residents were getting fed before their eyes, and some had even disappeared. Weeping and screams were heard everywhere in the streets. Children demanded ice cream. They ate it and couldn't stop. One boy's parents locked him in a room, but he simply climbed out through the window, sold his new console to a neighbor, and bought himself some more ice cream. The doctors were driving through the streets, catching the crazed children. They were injecting them with some strong sedatives and taking them to the hospital. We really need to check this ice cream factory. The police departed to examine the plan. Marcella met the policeman and escorted them to the production hall. Everything is sterile here and we only use the highest quality products. All these complaints are just nonsense. He invited the officers to try some ice cream. Rupert refused. And then Marcella just dipped his finger and ate some right from the cauldron. The ice cream turned out to be tasty. The guy simply couldn't stop. Rupert tried to stop him and calm him down. But Marcella dived right into the cauldron. What the hell is he doing? Rupert demanded an immediate expertise of the ice cream. All employees were sent to their homes. And the plant was closed until further orders. Off with the ice cream! Shut this factory down! Pay off the wages! The guard escorted Marcella out through the emergency exit and drove him home. There he demanded even more ice cream. His poor wife helped the guard to lock him in a room to prevent him from doing something stupid. But Marcella was banging on the door and begging for that ice cream. The police suspect that the ice cream factory of this criminal businessman is harmful to Roblox citizens. It is now being tested in the police department's laboratory. Didn't I tell you? Ronnie suggested Heather to protect their city from that evil Marcello. They had to somehow lure him out of the house and request an explanation, request to tell the truth. Heather agreed to help and Ronnie gave her the ice cream and told her what she needed to do. Mr. Marcello, Mr. Marcello, do you want some ice cream? Yes, give it to me. Marcella reached out and fell out of the window. Ronnie worked him over with his bat and dragged the body to the basement. When they went down to this terrible place, Heather saw all these dead ice cream makers and flasks. She didn't have time to say anything. Ronnie quickly threw Marcella into a cauldron with ice cream and turned the mixer on. The flask color began to change. Some kind of chemical reaction occurred. Panic ensued within the walls of the laboratory. Pieces of brains were found in that ice cream. Rupert went to Marcella's house together with the SWAT team. They broke inside, but the guard claimed that his boss was in the room, but in reality there was no one in there. Rupert noticed that the window was open and there were traces of fall on the floor, as if someone was being dragged. The cops began to comb the area. Heather ran out to meet them. She was frightened to death. There is a monster! Ronnie murdered them all! Rupert asked her to calm down. He couldn't understand what she was saying. The girl caught her breath and said that it was Ronnie who kidnapped Marcello. 
threw him into a vat of ice cream. Then some reaction occurred inside the flask with dead bodies of the ice cream makers and an SCP ice cream maker was formed. Rupert couldn't believe it. He thought that the girl just went crazy. Alright, let us check Ronnie's house just in case. Whoa, you're the greatest ice cream maker. Ronnie wanted to hug the monster, but this creature simply grabbed the guy and carried him away in an unknown direction. When the police surrounded Ronnie's house, the basement was already empty. Ronnie's mom told them that her son's the best person in the world and he would never even hurt a fly. However, they found a lot of evidence proving the opposite during the search. Heather was put in a psychiatric hospital. She was drawing one same picture over and over again, trying to warn the doctors that the ice cream maker would soon come for them. Selling ice cream was forever banned in Roblox. Several years have passed after the incident. A lot of ghost stories were told about the abandoned ice cream factory. Once, two friends decided to take their chance. They went to that factory in search of some valuable things and thrills. They heard some strange sound in one of the production halls. They crept up and saw some strange guy making ice cream. They came closer. What are you doing here? The most delicious ice cream out of you.